Yeah, uh, uh, Richard, I wonder if you could just tell us something about your own party's position on um, on, on on abortion in particular. Yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, those of you who don't know, um, Scottish Family Party is a relatively new political party in Scotland, focused on family issues. Uh, we are very definitely a pro-life policy. So our policy on abortion, we try and keep out of some of the most difficult extreme cases. So our policy is just we're against abortion on demand. OK, so abortion would only be allowed in what, what we call deliberately, vaguely, really extreme cases. In other words, we're not wanting to talk about particularly rape, incest, um, threats to the life of the mother, etc. We don't want to get into those debates, particularly at the moment. We're concentrating on the 99% of abortions that are basically a convenience choice. So we think, well, once we've settled that debate, we can then look at some of the other uh, more extreme and difficult cases. So that's our approach. Right. And my, my, my own party, is, as I said in the video, is going to have a, a, a firm pro-life policy. So, um, I, yeah, I'd be interested in any questions. I mean, to me, it's very clearly, um, well, both abortion and fetal alcohol spectrum disorder are very clearly men's, men's issues. So um, hopefully we'll, 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 have, we'll have a few questions on that. Um, can, can I start off with a question for you? Of course, so, Richard, uh, please the, do. Um, Fetal alcohol uh, syndrome. What do you think the right policy is in regard to that? I mean, should there be a, a ban on women drinking while they're pregnant, or what I, are you I, I, I really don't see an alternative, Richard. I, I hate to say it because, at the end of the day, if, if you allow it, it will happen. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, I, I guess some, some, some. You know, the question then is, how do you find that 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 um, pregnant women are drinking? They're hardly going to be sort of, you know, obviously pregnant walking down the road with a bottle of Johnny Walker. Um, mm -hmm. But no, I, I, I think it should be um, an arrestable matter. And if, 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 and if, frankly, if, 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 if need be, I think a woman should be incarcerated rather than, rather than um, harm her, harm her unborn child. And it's, it's absolutely obscene that a woman can, can harm her, harm her unborn child. And, um, uh, and and not be held accountable for it. I mean, she, you know, she she you know she can live. She uh, she can have the baby delivered, you know, half the weight, half the half the head size, and all the rest of it. You know, incapacitated, for, disabled for life, and just walk away yeah. from it. I mean, it, yeah. you know, it all comes back to the point about women. Women want rights, but 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 they don't want accountability. Um, I think it'd be safe to say the public health campaigning about the issue would have been a lot stronger and more challenging. If it was not specifically a, a women's issue, I suggest. Yes, agreed. Um, just, just had a message from Mister O three O three. Some of us wrote our questions on the previous session via the Hoover app. Should we repost them here? Um, yes, please. Um, that would be great. Um, yeah, just, just carry on that. Just to talk about that. Uh, policy if you're going to have a ban on drinking alcohol might be the, there'd be a problem that some pregnant woman who's used to drinking quite regularly suddenly she tries to become a teetotaler for nine months so she manages three months it's really difficult but then then just has a blowout uh and might that be be counterproductive I, I, i'm just i don't know if that might might be a factor i, I don't know but these things would need to be thought about as a very uh I, I think the reason it is soft peddled on is because it's it's relating to women, for sure. Exactly. Well, I mean, let's. I mean, very often, Richard, we we uh, we find in the men's rights movement that if you do a gender switch, it all becomes clear. Mm -hmm. How how would we feel about a man who um, somehow gets a drug in, you know, surreptitiously, you know, gets a drug into a woman's body, for example, says tells her that something's just a straight orange juice, but he's put a load of vodka in there, and she doesn't notice. Would you know? Would would we hold him accountable? Well, of course we would. Mm -hmm. So so why 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 shouldn't we hold the woman? You know, her, her responsibility should be to care for the baby, not 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 the right to harm or kill it. Yeah. Um, to so, me, it's really that simple. Got a question from Sean. Uh, Sean said, uh, "Banning recreational drugs of all kinds, other than tobacco and alcohol, hasn't proven effective." Well, yes, because it's because. Um, well, yes. I mean, I don't know if he's going back to the prohibition in the United States. Um, 
but this this is not about um, harming yourself. This is about harming the unborn child. I mean, the, un the unborn child, unlike you know adults, has no protection against it. It is simply a poison. Um, so, so you know, I mean, very often, well, it's you know, I think it says something that, that, that these issues. I mean, particularly um, FASD. Nobody is talking about them. I, I don't recall in the mainstream media in the last five years. Um, a single piece about it. And here we are, what, what, one in six British babies being born um, where uh, alcohol has impacted on their, has impacted on them in the womb to the extent that it will reflect um, in, in, you know, uh, either as sort of the, the, these facial um, changes or, or other physical and mental health changes, which could affect them for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's there's no, you know, and it's not a question, question of education because women are told this. You know, it's, it's it's always a cop out the education issue that oh, if women are told, they're they're all told about it. You know, what what pregnant mm -hmm. woman doesn't know that she's risking it? But they think the, the, the you know the risk is worth it for the for the for the sake of the pleasure. Now, the only thing I can recall in the media is seeing a sort of you know sort of jolly Daily Telegraph columnist type thing. Saying, oh yeah, it's, it's, so I, I got fed up, and then I thought, oh, stuff it, I'm going to have a drink. You know, you only live once, and you know, I'm not going to be as puritanical. It's that, that sort of line. It's all I can remember ever coming across in the yes. media. And anyway, Sam's back. So Sam says, um, here's an alternative question: When a baby is born suffering from fetal alcohol syndrome or toxified from another recreational drug use, it's prima facie evidence of assault. Yes, that, that, that's actually Sean, Sean um, Goldthorpe, um, who's been a fantastic contributor to the discussion groups and so on, uh, Sean. So, 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 so thank you very much for that. There's a, yes, there's a problem here. Um, um, it's only in the minority of cases that when there's prima facie evidence, and I guess I, I would think that you would mean there from, from facial characteristics, um, but that, that's only a small proportion of the total. And, and, and that, that, that is in part uh, a question of when, when the mother um, uh, drinks alcohol during pregnancy. Um, so, you know, but, but in most, you know, in, I don't know the figures, but my, my, my hunch would be at least 80 or 90% of cases, there's nothing in the newborn baby that will tell you, or even as a child maybe, that, that, that its mother has been drinking alcohol, but, but it will have the same mental health incapacitation. I mean, even things like lower IQs. So, for example, you know, low, lower IQs you know, are known to translate into higher criminality. Um, so it's, it's an interesting thing, you know, e even in men's rights groups, people, and I'm not saying that Sean is trying to do this, but there's always a, a wish to give women a get out of jail free card. And in fact, I, th I think women re represent only about 4% 4, 4 of the prison population. It should be a damn sight higher on, you know, because they're, 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 they're treated so leniently. Um, and the government, uh, you know, wishes wishes to close men's prisons, women's prisons, and basically say, you know, all women's criminality is a result of is a result of men. You know, it is the the, the relentless denial of female agency. Um, Steve, okay, so, so something here from Steve Moxon, um, um, the 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 writer of the amazing book, The Woman Racket, in two thousand and eight. Go out and buy it now. He says this, hi, Mike, nobody could disagree that abortion law needs reform, given that any and every woman in the West now easily and without expense can continually monitor her own fertility status. So has no excuse not to know when she becomes pregnant, certainly by a month after becoming pregnant. So if women have a responsibility towards their unborn child, as surely they must, there should be a time limit, even as early as the point at which a heartbeat is detectable. But clearly at some point when it is deemed a fetus normally becomes viable, would you agree to a time limited basis on abortion? This is a really tricky area. I mean, at the moment, the time limit is, is 24 weeks. And when the 1967 Abortion Act was passed, no fetuses, literally none, could, could, could survive outside the womb after being delivered at that point. Now, um, a fairly, I don't know if you know, Richard, but I think something like more than 50% of, of uh, fetuses delivered um, for, um, at, at that age you know, will go on and... And, and most 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 be unharmed. It's, it's it's a remarkable thing, but but I'd like to touch here on the issue of viability, because the the, the it, you know, and I really recommend people watch the Christian hacking video on this, 
Um, the, the, it's, it's a very arbitrary thing. I mean, if you put a, a six month old baby on a bed, leave it and come back a week or two later, you'll find a dead baby. So that, that baby is not viable. Um, it, you know, it needs support. And what, what, why there should be this difference between support and care outside the womb as in it, again, I think that's an issue of uh, giving women a card to not act responsibly. I, 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 I see it as, as, as really black and white. I mean, I, um, um, yeah, I mean, what, what's your take on, on that, Richard, about? Yeah, I think the viability question, I think, isn't morally significant. I mean, whether a person is dependent on other people, that doesn't have an impact on their moral worth as a human being. And the same applies in this case. The, the, the idea that, um, that, that say, the, the value sort of changes after a certain point of time of developing in the womb, I think it's just it's completely uh, unsustainable. So then the viability issue. And if you hear the sort of arguments that philosophers put forward, trying to claim that viability is the key thing. They're just completely heartless. The reason about, you know, one person's got the right to kill another one if it's inconveniencing them um, in a way that they can't avoid, these sort of arguments. And let's listen to them and think, they're, they're, just, they're just completely wrong. They're failing to acknowledge the core of the issue, which is the, the moral value of, of every human life. Once you accept that, which is the absolute fundamental principle once that's accepted all these other issues just become distractions yes I which is what more. they're intended to be of course the, 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 there's a paper by some uh, ethicists um some years ago saying that um that women who, who've, who've, who've had their who've had a baby delivered um even if it's full term should have up to a month afterwards to uh, demand that the that the baby be killed without any say so without any say on the part of the father even if the father is 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 willing to take complete responsibility for that child yeah it is, it that, is. that's that's very much a live point of view in uh, among academic ethicists i mean peter singer probably the leading utilitarian philosopher he, he said a, a newborn baby is of, of less moral worth than a cat because a cat has got greater capacity and the greater abilities than a newborn baby therefore a cat it's worth more. I, mean, I, I would challenge any political party to try and put that in the manifesto and see what happens to them. So these issues are kept in the background. But that is the way of thinking uh, that's, uh, that's driving medical ethics. I agree. Yes, no, of course, uh, you know, there's no penalty for carrying out the crime of uh, male genital mutilation in this country, although it's illegal. Um, but if you if you docked the tail of a dog, you'd probably find yourself in prison. Mm hmm. Um, uh, Mr. O303 says, what would be your strategy to convince men to fight for the rights of the unborn, given that most are too scared to upset women who most likely want to have the power to kill their kids? Well, that's that's the sixty four thousand dollar question right there, isn't it? Um, I, th I think through um, raising men's awareness that they that morally that, that, that they have a moral obligation to tell women no, that that, you know, if you if you. You know, where, where does giving women the choice, uh, you know, choice, I hate the euphemisms here, um, my body, my choice, you know, where, where does that lead to? Well, that leads to 73 million unborn children every year. Yeah, now, I think the whole of society is we're in a feminized society. So people are taught that the, the ultimate quality is like being sympathetic and understanding. So when people apply sympathy and understanding, they apply it to the person that they can understand and sympathize with, which is the, the pregnant woman. When it comes to the unborn child, it's a bit harder to sympathize and, and to understand their situation. They don't really make sense. So for people to stand up for the rights of the unborn, it really is going against the grain of our culture, our feminized culture. So I think a really important thing, like you were saying, that needs to happen here, because it's going to be men who are going to be more likely to be able to take a, a strong principle stand in the face of sort of emotional blackmail in a lot of cases. So I think there's a crucial role for men to, to, to rise up uh, on this issue and, and to fight for it, as has happened on lots of issues in the past as well. So I think worldwide momentum is beginning to gather on this issue. And I'm optimistic that it's going to come up the political agenda in Britain as well, fast.
Indeed. Well, we, we, we've had over 10 million unborn children killed in 50 years and not one. I think there might be, what, two or three politicians? Um, Jacob rees mogg comes to mind, I guess. Um, uh, I understand that in the pro-life group in the UK Parliament, uh, there are 25 members, 25 okay. out of the whatever, 680, is it? MPs? 650, yes. 650, yes. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, Sean, Sean Goldthorpe says, I, um, I think the risk of a post-birth prosecution for assaults would alter mothers' cost-benefit calculation around drug use. It may or may not. I mean, um, who knows? But again, the, 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 the problem there, Sean, I think, is that this would only be a minority. Um, I mean, I, I guess, yes, I mean, if, if, you know, if, if a woman binge drinks for, for, for most of the pregnancy, especially in the, in, in the early days, then, then it'll clearly be impacted. But if but, but, you know, even light alcohol consumption, you know, is going to poison the baby. I mean, that's, that's the long and short of it. And he, he makes, he says there's another related point. It remains lawful for adults to give alcohol to children as young as five in the UK. So the window of protection against involuntary intoxication start, starting at birth only lasts five brief years. Therefore, it's okay for any adult to give kids drink uh, behind closed doors. Uh, yes, uh, um, interesting points. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, that, that. That's a really good point, isn't it, in terms of the law. So it's okay to effectively put baby uh, alcohol into the baby before birth, but then as soon as it's born, there's suddenly protection. That's obviously an inconsistency, isn't it? If you look at the um, uh, Convention of Human Rights, etc., it tends to be quite clear that protecting the health of unborn children is a very, very important thing to do uh, uh, unless you're going to kill them of course killing them is fine but if you're not going to kill them then protecting their health is something that's taken very seriously by international bodies so um, one would have thought it wouldn't be too controversial to be uh, to be putting more pressure on in this area if it wasn't seen as a gender issue if there wasn't the feminist angle on it then i think they'd be coming down like a ton of bricks on it yeah yeah um, Robert Brockway. Um, uh, um, Rob, Robert, um, he, so, uh, Robert is, is running the Australian leg of this conference. So uh, th thanks for all your hard work, Robert. Um, here in Australia, there's been ongoing discussions about post-birth abortions. Has this been discussed in the UK? And do you think it might come to pass? Right. OK, well, we, um, I, I mentioned earlier, Robert, that um, some medical ethicists had, had called for women to have the right to have their babies killed up to one month without uh, any any consultation with the father or even the father having the right to look after the child um um so so douglas um welcome douglas so, thank, so, thank so, you so could you say about that i mean that was the case for example in ancient ancient rome and in a lot of societies through human history there was the idea that if you had a baby and for some reason you decided you didn't want it then you, you just leave it out to die um so in a sense, we're moving back towards that type of, of understanding of human life. No, I understand. And there's various in, reasons for that. But that's, I understand that's in, in ancient Rome, a, a baby, you know, that's born um, could just be killed. Um, and you know, no, 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 no questions asked. I, I, yeah. I don't know if there was the, a the usual procedure thing. They used to call it exposure. So you just basically just leave it outside somewhere to die on its own. And that was that was routine. But there are lots of other ways in which our morality is drifting back towards the sort of Greco-Roman model rather than the sort of Judeo-Christian understanding. That's just one case. Yeah, indeed. Um, OK, so, so, so Douglas, who will be speaking later in the week about um, the role of the UN and so on, uh, you know, international issues, so it says this, it was once acceptable to smoke while pregnant. That largely ended by education rather than making it illegal. Uh, first of all, on that point, it's a, it's a good point that it's not just alcohol, of course. It is... Um, smoking and I guess I guess other drugs is the best solution to FASD really attempting to police and criminalize um, uh, drinking while pregnant I suspect that most women simply don't know of the danger even if it's in some, some leaflet would it not be better to spend money on TV campaigns and make it socially unacceptable before criminalizing it um, well my, my understanding Douglas is that doctors and nurses you know you know when 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 women are diagnosed as, as pregnant uh, are told very clearly that they, that they shouldn't drink and, and th 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 this, to me, sort of has a bit of a flavour of, um, of, of, you know, of, oh, it's always education, because the problem there is, I mean, how many times, I mean, how many leaflets do you need? How many, how many TV campaigns? At the end of the day, if a woman is told very clearly by a doctor or nurse that she could be uh, severely 
um, damaging her unborn child through any drinking. Um, and, and perhaps even, I hadn't thought about this, thought, thought this through, but I mean, perhaps signing a document to the effect that she has been told that. Um, so, so there's no question that, uh, you know, if, 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 if you know, that, that, that she is damaging, she, she's knowingly damaging her child. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's always a question of accountability. We need to hold women accountable. They're, 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 they're no more accountable than children at the moment. Um, you know, as, as we see in, um, as we see in sentencing, you know, women will routinely get suspended sentences for things that men will, will spend five years in prison for, 10 years. Um, sorry, let me just... Um, okay, so um, Sean, Sean makes this, this point. Wim, uh, women's choices, there are four. Abstinence, contraception, post-birth adoption, and motherhood. I think that's an excellent, um, excellent summary. I, I don't think number five should be killing the unborn. Um, Carl Palmer says, isn't a big part of this issue that many sadly do not see the unborn as a, as a person. How do we fight for the right of the, for the unborn baby when they don't see it as a baby? Very, very good question. Um, um, do, do you want to say a few words on that, Richard, before, before I come Yeah, to the, there's two sides to it, I would say. First of all, there's the, there's the logical case. Okay, is it human? Is it a life? Is it, is it a human life? So that's, that's a very clear cut, logical, rational argument that can present it to people. Right. I mean, the general public, or if you're trying to communicate to the general public through the media, what are your chances of getting very far with a rational argument? Some might say <laughs> quite limited, the, the potential for that. But on the other hand, there's the emotional side as well, which can include, uh, as we saw, in my presentation, um, showing people the reality of abortion, showing people images, uh, you know, descriptions, that sort of thing, which, which reaches the emotions. But it's not just the emotions, it reaches people's conscience. It arouses their intuition that, right, this is, there's something far wrong here. So I think both, both ways need to be pursued. The problem with the rational is a lot of people are just not used to listening to and understanding and changing their beliefs on the basis of a rational argument. Um, the problem with the, the description, particularly the images, is there's some tricky questions to answer about how and when and where it's appropriate to show people sort of graphic, disturbing images, particularly if they're not expecting them. But I do think that line is necessary as well. So there needs to be the rational and the uh, emotional appeal. And I think when people experience those, they are very powerful. So the challenge is one of communication. It's not that people are resistant to, to the rational or the emotional case. It's just they haven't experienced it. No, I think that I think that's that's all spot on. I, I mean, pe people may criticise me and you know, over including a fourteen minute video about abortion within my own fifty minute uh, video, but I, I, I did that because I, I, I suspect that if I said this is a, this is um, a fourteen minute video on abortion, a lot of people just wouldn't have checked it out. So you know, I, I was I was careful to to have only I think apart from maybe a second or two, you know, only a di diagrammatic representation of a baby. But, 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 you know, we had some strong comments on, on the Hoover chat, chat, uh, chat stream about how sickening it was, because I, I don't think most, most MRAs, well, m most of the population, but, you know, and most MRAs are really informed about what abortion is. It's, so it's all, it, you know, even MRAs are inclined to say, well, it's a women's issue. And, you know, we, we, we really shouldn't be including it here. Well, it's a human issue. And because it's a human issue, it's a men's issue, as 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 far as I'm as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the so so I, um, I know you 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 have some you have some sort of pro life um, literature, and so, so so does the Center for Bioethical Reform. And Christian Hacking is going to be speaking um, late uh, late uh, later in the conference, and um, he he's he's very clear that uh, that um, from his campaigning that. You really, you know, people will say, oh, it's a ball of cells. Then you say, OK, well, um, would you watch this video of, of, of an abortion? Oh, no, no. Well, if it's a ball of cells, why, why would you be squeamish? You know, I mean, pe pe people, people know that this is not just a ball of cells or uh, as you were saying earlier, Richard, when we were chatting, you know, we were all a ball of cells. <laughs> to, uh -huh. well, we, to, we still are. I, mean, yeah, we just still are of cells. I would say to people, well, what are you then? What are you made out of? Yes. Are you are you yes. something other than cells? And they, they they go on the streets, CBR UK, um, with a I think it's an iPad, 
and just ask people if they'd like if they'd like to see see a video of, of an abortion i think it's half a minute or something um so edited highlights i suppose or low lights and so, and they record um people's responses and typically they'll go oh my god oh that's that that's not right oh the, you know and then they but some burst into tears um and most people, I know there was an American organization that went to Ireland uh, before the referendum, what was that, two, two or three years ago, I think. And, um, and, and the people who were pro-life just watched, you know, a video and then, the, sorry, people who were pro-choice or pro-killing, as I call it, um, were then shown a video and they, and they, they became pro-life in the space of a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the interesting thing there, I mean, you could say, for example, car accidents or various illnesses, whatever. If you show people really graphic images, they're going to say, oh, really, it is quite disturbing to see them. But the thing with those things, there's no one in society saying, oh, car accidents are fine. You shouldn't have any problem or people being tortured or, or whatever, or people dying of this illness or that illness. Everyone acknowledges that they're terrible things. So if they say, OK, I know it's really terrible, but I'd really rather not see the disturbing images. That's sort of OK. But it's when people are saying, well, well actually, there's no problem. What's going on here? There's nothing to object to at all. Then there is a need to show the reality of it. So it's a unique it's a unique issue, really, where you've got something that's horrific, but our society is trying to gloss it over and ignore the reality of it. So in that unique situation, I think there is a unique need to present people with the reality i couldn't agree more and, and just uh, just going back you, you were saying richard when you were campaigning in uh, in scotland um that you got some strong reactions from uh, householders after putting leaflets through i wonder if you could tell us about that oh yeah yeah it was uh, I, I was quite surprised by it on our election leaflet that was delivered to every household in scotland uh, one of the things on it was we're a pro-life party we oppose abortion on demand okay that was it I wasn't really expecting that to really, I knew a lot of people would disagree. I wasn't expecting it to be incendiary, but floods of people getting in touch saying, how dare you, you know, put this filth through our letterbox. You know, this is probably a hate crime. We've reported this to the police. Don't you dare put something through our letterbox again with this on. So I think that's where we are with the, the debate. We're at the stage where they're trying to pretend that expressing a pro-life view is so off the wall, so outrageous, that, that it's just going to be stamped on and ignored and, and phone the police or, or whatever. So they're, they're just trying to crush it before it starts, crush the debate before it starts. But it's not working. It really is not working. No. And it's coming up the political agenda. I, I'm really looking forward to people's reaction to, to, to one of your speeches, Richard, um, which, as you know, is in the video that, that we'll be showing later in the week. And you, you refer, I think, it's, is it to a Conservative member of the Scottish Parliament? who's saying that he's keen that, uh, I can't help but laugh at this, that he's keen that abortion remains safe for all involved. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's really? A, a, a I mean, Douglas Ross, leader of the Scottish nice. Conservatives, asked about abortion. He said, I, I, I approve of it as long as it's safe for everyone involved. I mean, I mean, you, you could, I mean that's not someone who's like just completely stupid. That's someone who's just never given the issue a moment's thought. No. And we're just making up some nonsense on the spot. And the, that's part of the challenge with these issues. It, it's not that we're entering a debate that's already going on. We're trying to start a debate mm. because I mean, if you're dominating society, you're getting away in every regard. You really don't want debates. Debates not doesn't favour you. What you want is just silence. You want the issue off the agenda, dealt with in the back rooms, and everything just carries on the way it's going. So opening up the debate is a challenge. Can just say an abortion? Something else I think cause for optimism. This is, uh, I've been thinking this through. See what you think about this. I'd be interested to hear people's views. The trend in society at the moment is towards political polarization in terms of social views as well. There's generally a polarization. You can see it with coronavirus. You end up with that one side of the political spectrum, like constant masks, and the other side are saying, yeah, they're absolutely fine. I mean, who would have thought something like that could end up being politicized? So everything becomes politicized. What's happened in America is abortion's very definitely been politicized. Now, the Republican Party is pro-life. The Democrats are pro-choice. Simple as that. Um, whereas in Britain, I feel that a lot of people who are sort of on the right, conservative sort of side of these divides, I can imagine quite quickly it could come to be seen that abortion is what those people on the other side, that's what the feminists, the progressives, you know, the, the lefties or whatever, that's what they want. So if we're on the other side, 
well, probably that's something they were going to be opposed to. Now, now polarisation is normally a bad thing, but it might play a positive role on this issue, as it might encourage a lot of people to look at the issue afresh and think, I'm really going to look at this with a critical eye, because if that's what they're saying, I don't agree with anything else they're saying, so I'm really going to have a good look at this for myself. And I think that might make a lot of people uh, very open to the pro-life position who wouldn't otherwise have considered it. But let's see. Let's see yeah. how it develops. Now, I have to recommend again that the, the, the people catch your video and the Q, your, your Q&A, because uh, you, you, you talk a lot about this, and uh, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. Um, I, I happen to be in a pub in, Isle, in Dublin um, with uh, some, 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 some friends when the results of the Irish referendum on abortion came through. And I can honestly say it was one of the most, one of the saddest moments of my life. Um, I wonder if you'd like to tell us all Nicola Sturgeon's response. Yeah, well, Nicola Sturgeon said she was uh, joyful at the result. Joyful. Now, you really think if, if a politician describes themselves as joyful that they're going to allow the killing of unborn children in another country, I mean, you really should be worried about your next interview, shouldn't you? You're really going to be put on the spot about that. Yeah. But of course, it never happens. It never happens. The journalists are all tame. The other politicians are tame. So she's never challenged strongly about it, but an utterly outrageous thing yeah. to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I'd like a few questions on, on uh, I don't think anybody has raised so far about whether this is an issue that the men's rights movement should major on. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm now, it's taken me a little while, but I'm now 100% convinced that it, it, this, this should be almost um, a flagship um, uh, issue for the men's rights movement. Um, which is probably worth, worth a whole video in itself. But um, so, so um, if, if, if people could um, perhaps um, put, 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 put some questions around that or something in the chat, we, we'll, we'll try to get to it. Um, um, anonymous en attendee says, what, what do you say to those men who believe that abortion is a good thing and is a right of men? I think you mean should be a right of men. Do you support their rights for abortion? No, absolutely not. Um, I, I, I think this, this is um, gender equality gone mad. The, the idea that, that, that a man should should well I, I either unilaterally decide that an unborn child be killed um possibly against the wishes of the mother i think to me is so morally repellent i don't have the words for it uh, but, but 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 the idea that they could jointly come to that decision is is is, is barely any better um no I, I don't think anybody should have the rights to kill the unborn any more than they should have the right to kill to kill a one-year-old or a two-year-old or a 20-year-old or a 50-year-old. Yeah. I mean, the, I, I see them all in exactly the same light. And I, I, I'm not, as Richard knows, um, I, I'm not religious, but, but um, I mean, um, I find myself with, with, with uh, religious people on, on, you know, on this issue that, you know, life does start at conception because you have at that moment the potential, you know, all, all the potential for a fully grown human being is there. Is it at that moment yeah there is a genuine issue with regard to men's part in it because the moment it's clearly unfair that a woman could decide to have an abortion but if she decides the child to be born then the man suddenly becomes responsible for it so there's obviously an unfairness there now what to do about it is quite difficult if you're trying assuming you're, you're operating in a country where abortion is legal the question could be asked should the father the biological father have some say and whether abortion is going to take place. Now, that's a very knotty problem indeed to get into. I mean, the Scottish Family Party's policy is just a, a little toe in the water. It's just to say there should be some system, at least, of recording the father's wishes where an abortion is going to take place. Obviously, we don't want any abortions to take place, but assuming the law isn't going to change anytime soon, we think fathers should have a chance to, at the very least, record their opinion on it at least they have to be asked about it i mean it's, it's a start but it's a very difficult issue and it's, it's my view richard I, I don't think you and i have discussed this but i mean to me i mean a seat like bedford with 145 majority it, it seems to me that um we wouldn't have to work too hard to 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 potentially affect the 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 the, the outcome of the election and i guess i guess we will get support from those of a more conservative mind um so, so um, having said that, uh, eight percent of the population of, so, of of Bedford are Muslims, and Muslims are are, are pro life, as are Christians. And I, th I think, I mean, it'd be a strange religion that wasn't pro life, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yeah, so, yeah. so, you know, so it wouldn't need me to, to go back to the point in the video. It wouldn't need me to become an MP. It would just need me 
to, to, to get enough votes to change the outcome. Yeah, we, we play a different game in Scotland. We've got a different electoral system whereby small parties can actually aim to get people elected. But I mean, there's quite a lot of people in Britain who vote solely on the pro-life issue. So they look at the candidates and they will only vote for a candidate who is explicitly pro-life. So some election, a lot of them just never vote, therefore. If it became the case that 5% of the population took that position, then the big parties would really have to sit up. Like in Bedford, they'd be thinking, the Conservatives would be thinking, right, we cannot put a pro-choice candidate. We've got to put a pro-life candidate in there or we're doomed. And they probably would. I mean, it really would make a difference. As you were saying uh, in your speech, what needs to happen for an, for an item to become a serious political issue is people need to base their voting decisions on it. So long as they just, you know, write a letter to the MP and he sends you an answer back, whatever. I mean, they don't care about that. All they care about is, are you going to vote for them or not? And when enough people put an issue to the top of their voting priorities, then the mainstream parties have to start listening. Agreed, agreed. Yes, and interesting, I mean, do, do, you, you said the figure of uh, 5% there, Richard. Is, is that your guess? Um... Uh, no, I, I think the in the Scottish Parliament, there are constituencies and there's also a complicated sort of semi-proportional representation element as well. To get someone elected in the proportional representation element, 5% puts you in with a chance of getting elected. People have been elected with 5% of the vote. If you get, say, 7, then you're almost definitely going to get elected. But 5% puts you, puts you in the game. So, so the whole Scottish Family Party policy, uh, strategy is geared towards trying to get a couple of MSPs in the Parliament. Once you get those voices in there, then you, you can really put these issues on the political agenda. Um, whereas UK and UK elections, it's a different game. You're trying to influence by the UKIP strategy, which is more that the other parties get scared of you. So they have yes. to cover you off by, by shifting over in your direction. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, Richard. Um, I, I, I just did a bit of mental arithmetic here. Um, so, so in Bedford, I think about 50,000 people voted last time. So, I mean, 5%, if 5 of people voted for me as the only pro-life candidate, that's assuming I was. And so it's worth saying, of course, that, that, that all, all, all the major parties, at least, are all pro-killing. They're all um, pro-abortion. Mm -hmm. And w w why, would, why would somebody vote for, uh, for a party that, that favours the killing of unborn children? But that, that's, that's another debate. But, but I mean, for, you know, 5% of 50,000, I think, is 2,500. And in this mm -hmm. constituency, the, the MP got in with 145 votes last time. So it's like, you know, what? maybe 18 times the size of the majority it is yeah yeah you know it you know and uh, you know uh, you know at the end of the day it's what delivered for nigel farage mm -hmm. yeah but that yeah absolutely that's what happened with with brexit with the eu it got to the stage where a substantial minority of the electorate uh, made it their number one voting priority that was what they were going to vote for and therefore the other parties have to take it into account I think with the pro-life issue, I mean, as you touched on that, I think rationally, it's quite hard to make a case that, that another issue should be higher up the agenda. If we're talking about like a, like a death rate greater than World War II or whatever, I mean, this, this should, really should be the top of the agenda. Um, so, uh, so our challenge is to persuade voters to see it that way. And the reason it's a challenge is not because the case isn't strong. I mean, the case is overwhelming. The challenge is we've got a political and media establishment that want to ignore the issue. As far as they're concerned, lots of other things are, are really the most important thing. Like, you know, thousands of unborn children being killed. That, that's not so important. You know, a penny on the tax rate up or down. That's the thing that really ought, ought to be getting people wound up and determining how they vote. Um, so that's, that's what we're up against. We're up against the, the whole of, of the establishment of the po politics, media, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the argument's on our side. It's such it, a clear no, case. Absolutely, Richard. Uh, but it's the reason that we're moving from, if you like, a men and boys issues lens to a pro-family lens, because people, you know, the average citizen, I mean, I think if you spend a lot of your time in the men's rights movement, as, as I do, inside the MRM bubble, you, you, know, you can easily believe that um, a huge proportion of the population or, you know, uh, uh, understand all this. And they don't. That's the reality. You know, you only need to go in, go in, go on the street and ask people at random and you'll find that, that a lot of what what is taken as known 
by MRA is, is absolute rockets. It's just weird to, mm. to, to so many yeah. people. So it's the reason yeah. that we're moving to a pro-family thing, because people, you know, even if people themselves are not in families, they could be living alone. Uh, you know, people have an instinctive understanding that families are important. Families are the cornerstone of civilization. Um, and um, no, and we've, you know, I've said this privately and publicly, Richard. You know, we, we, we've taken inspiration from, from from your party. I think what 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 you know, your your sort of manifesto and your the materials um, um, are, are just extraordinary. I mean, a lot of, I mean, a lot of thinking going there. Um, I wonder if you just what, want to perhaps give give people your URL, your website address. Yeah, just at scottishfamily.org, scottishfamily.org. If anyone wants to just drop us an email at contact at scottishfamily.org, we'd be happy to you know, send you a pack of materials or, or, or whatever. Or if you wanted to join the party, that would be fantastic as well. We've got quite a few supporters yeah. around Britain, not just in Scotland. As well. and, 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 um, and, and make a donation. I mean, obviously not, not uh, such that it would reduce your donations to J4MB, um, but uh, no, I mean it, it's, it's fantastic, fantastic what what what, uh, what you've done up there. I just like to say to people, we, we've we've got about uh, five or ten minutes left. Um, I, I'd, I'd like a few questions, or even even put things in the chat room about um, is this uh, is abortion in particular, and I suppose FASD to a lesser extent, issues that the men's rights movement should really be majoring on. To my mind, they they absolutely should. Um, because they they have a chance of getting traction, and, and you know, and, and we have so many natural allies, I think, including religious communities, who who you know, it's it's a struggle to get them to get too excited about um, about about a, a lot of issues in this list to the right of me. Um, what, what I think of it, this this image, by the way, to um, uh, to, to my side, <clears throat> is the one that should have been on the on the video um, that that you've just seen, but but we had we had a last minute technical hitch, so apologies for that. Um, let me just have a quick look at the. We've got, got a few more questions coming in. Uh, uh, Robert Brookway, um, another interesting question. Do you believe that the collapsing birth rate in many nations, even in the developing world, may change attitudes to abortion? Uh, I, th I think so. And we, we have some interesting examples. Um, uh, Hungary, for example, um, has, has absolutely reversed its. I mean, apparently, abortions are now a, a small fraction of what they were some years ago, because the, the government has introduced family friendly um, policies. For example, I think women who have more than two or three children are uh, get their education fees waived and so on. So they're, they're, they're popping them out over in Hungary. And um, I, I think I think it's most most developed countries now um, are, are, are facing population decline and quite yeah. quite. And yeah. th that is that is uh, most of that, I think, is down is down to abortion. If, if abortion didn't happen, this this um, collapsing birth rate wouldn't happen that's certainly the case in scotland abortion would more than bridge the death uh, sorry bridge the gap between the number of births and deaths I mean, what's in hungary i've spoken to someone from the hungarian government they've got all sorts of things but just one of the things is that if a woman has four children she basically doesn't pay another tax or a penny in tax for the rest of her life wow uh, and, and there's lots of other there's all sorts of schemes and, and if you're going to have a bigger family if you commit to having a bigger family Basically, you'll be supported in getting a bigger house. And then, you know, if it doesn't quite work out, there's sort of compassionate systems for dealing with that. But if you commit to having a bigger family, you get a bigger house. I and mean, in Russia, meanwhile, uh, the abortion rate per 100 live births is, I think I've got this right, is 110. It might even be 140. So in other words, most pregnancies end in abortion in Russia and their population is plummeting. Just one more thing to say on this. Uh, the SNP produced a paper about for declining population in Scotland. One of their solutions was to make uh, fertility treatment freely available to single women. So it was to deliberately produce fatherless children as yes. their answer to population decline. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Carl Palmer says, a related issue I see is most ministers of health worldwide are feminist. Should more men enter the healthcare fields and stand for Ministry of Health positions? Well, um, they, 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 they can try, but uh, there's a very strong bias against recruiting, uh, recruiting men, in, you know, as, you know, so, I mean, so, so, certainly as doctors, that goes back to the 1970s. And it's the reason that, well, one of the reasons that the NHS is, is, is such a complete disaster. Um, but, 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 you know, they, they, uh, they can stand for Ministry of Health positions, but, but they've got a snow, snowflakes chance in hell, quite frankly. 
because you know yeah. i mean f- i mean f- feminists well, feminism is a cancer, and this cancer is is, is 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 everywhere. Sean Goldthorpe says, I definitely concur this is a men's issue. After all, these are men's children uh, being terminated, and half of them are male. Very, very good points. I think with the abortion issue, you've got to remember, and if you look at like pro-life vigils outside abortion clinics, you'll find they're mainly women who are there. So uh, there's uh, yeah, an awful lot of women uh, who are opposed to abortion for sort of theological, ideological grounds, and also a lot through their personal experience as well. They feel they were basically sold a lie, that this is a quick, easy solution to a sticky situation. But then years later, as we touched on, I mean, they're, they're living with regret, guilt, and, and difficulties relating to it. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of people, uh, a lot of people with very strong feelings on the issue that are currently cut out of public debate, basically. Indeed, indeed. Um, anonymous attendee says, given the res- given the resistance to ban abortion, um, given that J4MB is changing to family matters, um, I might just say here that, 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 that we've actually come up with another name, which which uh, which we're going to put to the Electoral Commission. But anyway, um, given that J4MB is changing its name to be more appealing, uh, number one, how will your party get more votes than by sticking with men's issues? Uh, number two, how will you convince the men's movement that this isn't a sellout? Okay. Um, well, the, the, um, I think I said in the video that something like 17 out of these 25 issues um, will um, will be, um, you know, absolutely core to 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 the new party. But the but the problem is that there there simply are not votes in men's and boys' issues. Um, even even you know, uh, you only have to look at somewhere like. Um, Camberwell and Peckham, where the ghastly Harriet Harman has been an MP for what forty years. Um, men are turkeys voting for Christmas. You know, Birmingham Yardley, the Yardley gob, Jess Phillips. Um, could it could not be clearer that that the woman hates men, um, and you know doesn't doesn't give a damn about men being victims of domestic violence, for example. And yet men men vote for for them. <laughs> Ditto the whole of Scotland with Nicola Sturgeon. Indeed, <laughs> absolutely astonishing. Yeah, I mean, men will vote for for for, for women who, who just absolutely loathe their very existence. Um, so, um, to, to, you know, so, so I, I go back to the point that you know we are a political party, and as a political party, um, we need we need to get more votes. So it's it's really it's, it's a question of well, do, do do we stick with men's issues and only only talk about men's and, and boys' issues? And, and get and get a few votes or do we say look there's another lens to look at this through um there's the lens of the family there's the lens of the child and not not, not just boys but girls so i mean you know girls suffer from fatherlessness girls as well as boys are abused by being denied access to to to, to their father and, and and in so many other ways um i mean how many how many children uh, you know are the victims of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder um, you know, p- people just will not look through the lens of men and boys disadvantaging and suffering. Uh, um, they simply won't do it. And I haven't seen that changing much over the years. I think the sophistication of the men's rights movement in articulating the issues and so on, I think, has gone up, you know, leaps and bounds, let's say, even since the 2014 conference. Um, but that hasn't translated into into any impact on, on governments, for example. So you know, I'm afraid, you know, we really have zero choice. But but you know, and I, I'm dedicating the rest of my days to this, to 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 a strategy of of getting enough votes to force these damnable politicians, men and women alone uh, alike, to change. And uh, uh, so some people some, some people may be aware that we had three Conservative MPs due to join us for interviews at this conference, and and, and we were pleased and maybe a bit surprised at that because historically we've only had the the wonderful Philip Davis MP join us. Well, all all three um, all three Conservative MPs pulled out um, without without explanation. So, I mean, that that really tells you that you know that, that all the parties are kowtowing to 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 to, to women's issues, to to, to feminism, um, and feminists are not getting weaker. If anything else, that they're, they're entrenching their 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 power. How will I convince the men's movement that, that this isn't a sellout? Well, that's a very good question. <laughs> um, some, I, I guess some people will think that, um, but I'd, I'd make the distinction. I mean, I'm still, 
a men's rights activist, and I, I, I shall call myself that, you know, uh, you know, until until the day I die. Um, but I think I can do more, and others, and, and other MRAs can do more, by, you know, by 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 presenting issues through the family and children's lenses. So, and I, I'm sorry if we, you know, if we if, if we lose supporters and some some donors. Uh, ho hopefully, we won't. Sorry, Richard, I've, I've I've talked for way too long. Over to you. Anything? Uh, yeah, I think it's an interesting decision. When we were choosing a name for the Scottish Family Party. We chose family because, like you were saying, it's got positive connotations for almost everyone. And, and most of our policies can be seen as linking in to, uh, to family issues one way or another. But it doesn't reflect the entirety of our agenda. I mean, for example, they're talking about scrapping exams in Scottish schools and just the teachers make up the grades instead. So we're against that. That's not really a family issue. Uh, the best name for the Scottish Family Party, really the most accurate name, would be the Scottish Socially Conservative Party. But people don't understand that. And you wouldn't be allowed to put the Conservative in, in your name in any case. Um, so I think for, for people with views such as ourselves, it's quite difficult to have a single word that captures what you're all about. If you're the Green Party, it's really easy. Call yourself the Green Party. Everyone knows what you're about. And they might well vote for you on that basis. But I, I think for, uh, for parties such as ours, we really need to communicate to people what we're all about because they won't get it just from a name. There, there isn't a a name you can come up with that really makes people think oh yeah i know the sort of things they're talking about that's on my wavelength so ultimately the name is important but what's more important you've got to actually communicate with people and give them a flavor for the sort of issues they were campaigning on and that's the uh, that's the challenge thank thank you thank you richard i think i'm gonna to have to wrap up now because um we're almost out of time but just a final um some comments from douglas um I Aren't you, increase, aren't you increasing your votes by appealing to the family, then decreasing it by the stance on abortion? Very, very good question. Um, I'm not sure, you know, for the reasons that Richard was articulating, I'm not sure that we'll decrease it by the stance on abortion. I think some people will vote for us um, on that one policy alone, quite, 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 quite frankly. Um, but, even, you know, even if the overall impact is to reduce um, votes, I think it's the right thing to do. I mean, I don't think, I think if you have, um, you try and have a moral core to your party, I think it's inevitable that you will be putting some things in that that that, that are no, not vote winners and might even be vote losers. Anyway, um, th thank you all very much for all the interesting questions and comments. Um, wonderful, and th th thank thank you, Richard, for 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 for, for sharing this with me. And uh, I look forward to the the remaining yeah. three sessions today. Yeah, and thanks everyone for chipping in as well. Hopefully, see some of you later. Uh, and uh, we have next the wonderful, the inimitable, um, and Winnicom. Um, who has some has some um, as, as as a practicing Roman Catholic has some um, has some I, I think good good uh, good views on on abortion. So her video will start in about three minutes, um, and um, we'll see you in, in just over an hour's time. And I'll I'll try and sort out the Hoover problem before then, but I I can't promise. Okay, it's 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 it's, it's actually worked I think quite well just on Zoom, Richard, hasn't it? But uh, yes, uh -huh. okay. So um, th thank you very much, and um, I'll, I'll end the session there. Okay, let's end.